Good morning, everybody. Wisconsin's 7th Congressional District Representative Tom Tiffany is back for our monthly chat today, Thursday, July 11th, 2024. For Driver.com, I'm Ben Dryden, and you are watching Dryden Wire Live, presented by Americans for Prosperity Wisconsin. AP Wisconsin works to reignite the American dream and break down government barriers that hold us back from our full potential. Find an event near you at AFPWisconsin.com and join AFP to fight for more freedom for all Wisconsinites. A quick reminder, tomorrow morning uh, we'll be joined by Wisconsin's 74th Assembly District Representative Chance Green. You can watch that starting uh, live streaming at 8.30 a.m. right here on our Facebook page. But today, of course, we're chatting with, as we do every month, uh, Wisconsin's 7th Congressional District Representative Tom Tiffany. Congressman, good morning, sir. Ben Dryden, it's good to join you. I trust you're in the world headquarters. That's right, Spooner. <laughs> All right. And we got the big parade coming up, the, the rodeo this week and parade. I know you usually get to that if you can. Are you going to be going to that this year? Yeah, it might be kind of tough this year. Um, you know, the convention starts down in Milwaukee. I've never been to a national convention. And um, with it being in Milwaukee, I'm going to be sure to make it this year. I'm not sure it's going to work out to make it to the rodeo parade, but I hope a lot of people get there because it's a terrific parade. It is, and it sounds like the weather is going to be nice, and that's important. Has a huge impact on it, of course. Um, I'm supp- so it hasn't. You've never been to one of the. Was there any particular reason you haven't gone to a national convention? Is it simply the proximity, like geographically, like holy cow, if they're held in Texas or something? Is that it? Number one, number one reason is that it happens in summer. And I do not like leaving northern Wisconsin in the summer. It is, uh, we get a precious few months that we really get to enjoy summer and I don't want to give up any of it. Um, But actually, so in 2020, you know, that was a COVID year and everything was shut down. And I just was not interested in going to another big city where they were all, you know, hair on fire, shutting everything down and um, not allowing people to interact. I just wasn't interested in being in another city like that. So I did not intend, attend in 2020 either. And so what is what is actually discussed? You just said you've never been there, but I'm sure you know what you know what happens there. How long is that? Is it a week or two? And then what's the... Is it just like a pep rally or are they actually trying to accomplish something? And if so, what do they accomplish? Yeah, so it's four days and it's the process of nominating the president and... So there's been a few years, not often, but a few years where the nomination went to the convention. Um, You know, I think, for example, um, I don't know this perfectly, but in 1976, Ronald Reagan challenged Gerald Ford, who was the president, the incumbent president at that time. And uh, Ford won the nomination at the convention in 1976. So that's how it used to be done. And maybe we'll even be done in the future. But um, our nomination process has been largely completed. President Trump will be our nominee. I think the biggest question is who he's going to nominate as vice president. Do you think he'll make that decision before the convention? Oh, I don't think he'll do it before the convention. I mean, President uh, Trump is very good at stagecraft. I would think he's going to save that for the convention. So, oh, he'll do it at the convention. But so, if that's uh, starting, I think it's Monday, isn't it? Next week, the convention. Yeah. So, yeah, it goes Monday through Thursday. Thursday is the closing speeches. President Trump will speak Thursday night, and um, so yeah, it'll be really interesting. You know, a lot of you rah rah stuff. It's great. I think it's great for Wisconsin and the city of Milwaukee. Lots of events going on. I know I sure plan on attending some and. We're really looking forward to it. Um, it'll be great to showcase Milwaukee and Wisconsin um, in, in such a great time of year in July. Uh, any any predictions, Vice President? Uh, I don't. Um, oh. uh, there's a number of governors. Like I like Governor Youngkin out of uh, Virginia. Uh, it doesn't sound like he's on the short list. I think uh, Governor Reynolds out of Iowa is really quite good also. Governor Kim Reynolds. And um, so there's lots of good candidates out there, you know, lots of speculation. Um, But, you know, President Trump always does his own thing in regards to this stuff. He'll make the decision um, and it'll be it'll be really interesting to see what happens. Mm. I think the bigger deal is going to be the Democrats convention in August in Chicago. First of all, is Chicago going to burn with such great animosity? happening between 
what are the traditional Democrats and now what I call the Hamas Democrats or the progressive Democrats that really want to change their party. There's a lot of friction going on. And you see some of that right now with this whole thing. Should President Biden uh, stand aside and have somebody else be their nominee? I mean, you had one of uh, uh, President Biden's cabinet members, Cedric Richmond, who comes from Louisiana, used to serve in the House of Representatives. I mean, he uh, basically said, uh, if you're not supporting President Biden or you're trying to take him out as our nominee, you may be a racist, saying that to fellow Democrats or are there racial overtones of what you're trying to do wow. to President Biden? So, yeah, they got a big conflict going on. And that's really what this week has been about out in Washington, D.C. Yeah. Usually the, um, the left wing media out here is chasing us down as Republicans trying to get comments from us. Well, this week. We're all just um, happily going about doing our jobs without microphones being shoved in our faces because it's the Democrats that had to answer the question about Joe Biden. No, you say this week you got it was just this week you guys were back. So the, the, the debate was, I think, a couple of weeks ago. But you think you were off for a little bit there, right? Or you weren't? Yeah. Okay. For the week of Fourth of July. Yes. Right. Right. There you go. But yeah, that has been kind of wow. What a shift all of a sudden since that debate. And I don't know who's advising Donald Trump. Um, and maybe it's just Donald Trump advising himself and realizing this moment. Yeah, you haven't really heard anything from him for the most part <laughs> since like the debate, which is actually probably smart because just let you know ride that wave as long as you can because the uh, the media is torn right now. Not torn. The Democrats are torn right now, as you just mentioned, regarding what to do with President Biden in the sense of can we get him to leave? Should he leave? Should someone else step in? Are we behind him? It, it's really bizarre to see this. Uh, I don't recall, at least in the nine years I've been doing this, I've never seen anything like this, where, where they're when saying not, it's not about your policies or your issues. We just don't think you can do this. Have you seen anything like it? Uh, no. When your opposition is shooting themselves in the foot, you know, you don't get in the way of it. And <laughs> that's, certainly, that's certainly the route that President Trump has been taking here over the last two weeks. So, oh. But, yeah, they got a real fight going on in um, – and I think they understand some of the pitfalls of what they're proposing to do. You know, you got prominent people like, you know, the actor George Clooney. You've got Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer questioning whether Biden should be their nominee. But he's got 14 million votes from primary voters. And these are the same people saying, boy, democracy is at risk if Donald Trump becomes president once again. Well, how are you going to lecture people about democracy when you say ah, the person that won the most votes, we're just going to chuck him aside as the Democrat nominee? They've got themselves a real problem. And the best thing we can do to stay out of the way. Yeah. Uh, speaking of kind of staying out of the way, uh, but also trying to get stuff accomplished. Has this has there been any negative impact on your uh, not just yours, but the the House's ability to get things done, business as usual, because of this distraction, because of this noise that is happening right now regarding President Biden? No, it's not affecting us in the House. Oh. We're we're continuing to do our work on the appropriations bills that um, need to get done by the end of September. We're steadily uh, passing them um, week after week trying to get those done before the end of September. We just passed a bill, the SAVE Act, yesterday, okay. which requires um, proof of American citizenship if you are going to register to vote. You know, something that seems pretty simple, pretty so common sense to most people. Um, almost every Democrat voted against it. Uh, in effect, saying, yeah, we don't have a problem with the illegal aliens voting. And so... Uh, we continue to push bills through, um, and, and and I think some really good stuff earlier this week passed a bill to be able to protect the ability to continue to have gas stoves and um, be able to have gas appliances, which uh, the Biden administration is trying to eliminate them. So, um, uh, you know, we just continue doing our work. Yeah, so the SAVE Act, you said that's the for citizens voting have to show an ID now to register. 
So does that mean when they go to vote, they have to show their ID or they can register beforehand and, you know, it's like a passport as long as you showed it once, uh, then you find you're registered for a few years. Or does that, what, what is it saying is you have to show an ID to vote. Is that what it is? Um, what it is saying is when you register to vote, yeah. you have to prove that you're a citizen. So whenever you're doing your registration, you have to, and there's a variety of documents you can produce and that show that you are an American citizen and you just need to, uh, it just needs to be required. And it would be up to the states to do it. The requirement falls on the states. The other thing that the states would have to do as a result of this bill, if it were to pass, is that um, the states need to remove anyone who is in the country illegally if they're on the voter rolls. Because uh, in some states, they found thousands of illegal people illegally in our country that are on the voter rolls. And so it'd be a requirement now of the states to purge their rolls of those people that are in the country illegally and are not legally um, allowed to be able to vote in America. Uh, so if do you think that is like that part alone is one, uh, a, a reason why Democrats uh, mostly voted against this? Yeah, they voted against it because they want illegal aliens to be able to vote. I mean, all you got to do is look at a couple of the major cities like right here in Washington, D.C., where I sit right now. They voted to allow people who are not who are foreign citizens to be able to vote in their local elections. So think about it. The ambassador to uh, from Russia can vote in the election. The ambassador from China can vote in a local election in Washington, D.C. That's the kind of stuff that happens as a result of them doing this. I'll give you another example. Our neighbors to the west in Minnesota, they just uh, passed legislation to allow driver's licenses for people who are here illegally in the United States of America. That driver's license is used oftentimes as the uh, means to be able to vote as proof that you can vote. So it's really a slippery slope. And we just want to make sure of one thing, that it is American citizens that are deciding American elections, not foreign interests. And that's kind of a common sense thing. So I mean, oh, it feels like just, it is. But then again, I feel like if I had a, a Democrat on, uh, one of your Democratic colleagues on, and they would explain it, and I'd probably go, oh, okay, that probably makes sense too. But so far, I haven't really heard that, that side yet. I haven't heard that the argument of, well, actually, here's the thing that Congressman Tiffany didn't tell you. Like, I wish I knew that part because it sounds like this is a no-brainer. Well, it's a very simple concept. Do you want American citizens deciding American elections or do you want people who come from foreign countries who are not American citizens to decide our elections? I, I mean, no, it I, is yeah. really pretty simple. And by the <laughs> <Yeah>. way, <laughs> uh, for anyone listening out there, if... Um, if you can come on this show, I'm sure Ben would welcome you doing this. And you want to make the case of why people here illegally in this country should be able to vote in our elections. I would urge you to reach out to Ben and ask to come on the show because I would like to hear I would why too. that should be allowed. I would too. Democrats never asked to come on though. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're always fair. By the way, I know you're always yeah. you're always fair in regards to interviews and people should not hesitate to do that because i mean i come on to shows regularly that people have a uh, left lean or people that ask ad adversarial questions i do it all the time i would urge any democrats who are running for office you should come on ben's show because he's always fair uh, we do have a question here from dan erickson what parts of project 2025 do you disagree with i think the project 2025 uh, I don't really understand a lot about it. I don't know if you've read a lot about it. I've not found a place that I actually could trust to read about it that would actually be telling me, you know, without a spin on it. So I don't know that much about it, but it's about like the Republican platform kind of a thing. D are you familiar with that? And for Dan's question, what parts do you disagree with? Yeah, I'm not very familiar with it. And um, it's something that the Heritage Foundation put out. And uh, like I said, I'm just not that, all that familiar with it. Um, I would just urge people when they hear that to take a look at and, and do a fact check on anything that comes out of it to make sure that's what what's being um, said is accurate. Um, I can tell you sitting on the Judiciary Committee and sitting through a committee right. hearing yesterday that um, 
every Democrat brought up Project 2025, and it's clear what they're trying to do. They're trying to tie that to President Trump. And President Trump has said, no, that's not my document. And my platform, I released, and in fact, if people want to see, because this is what they're attempting to do. They want to tie Project 2025 to President Trump and then be able to ride that to November. Project 2025 is not President Trump's. President Trump has issued his own set of um, policies that he stands for, you know, securing the border, stopping the ruinous inflation. Let's be strong uh, militarily. Let's make America strong once again on the international stage. I mean, he's laid all those things out. If you want to know what President Trump stands for, look at his um, look at his platform that he's put out. But anyhow, it's it's an attempt to change the the issue, I mean, I got to tell you, since June 27th, two weeks ago, um, and the disastrous debate that Joe Biden has had, they're trying to find anything to change the subject from Joe Biden. Project 2025 is one of those. Things. Okay. I need to research it a little bit more. I'm not that familiar with it. So I appreciate that. And as always, thank you for being uh, you know, open to, uh, to answering any questions. So what else is going on in Washington, D.C.? Any exciting news? Hey, um, so... I believe it's uh, July 24th, we will be introducing a bill to make the Apostle Islands a national park. It is what? currently des- It is currently designated as a national seashore. Many, many people will be familiar with that. Um, it is one of the crown jewels, I would say, in America, but certainly in Wisconsin, one of our crown jewels, named a national seashore Um, I think a few decades ago, I don't remember exactly what year that was, but um, we think it's worthy of being designated as a national park. So we uh, have drafted the bill. It's going to be introduced, I believe, at a hearing in the Federal Land Subcommittee that I chair on July 24th. And we're really anxious to hopefully move this bill and move the Apostle Islands from a national seashore designation to a national park designation. There's not a lot of difference, but I think it really, um, there's a, um, naming it a national park, I think gives it that increased credibility that a national park designation um, uh, allows that I think is really important for really a very special place here in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, How many, do you happen to know just ballpark how many national parks there are? In, I don't know how many national. I would talk like forty are. or four thousand. I don't know. I, I believe it's in the hundreds. Okay. I believe it's in the hundreds, but this would be the first national park in the state of Wisconsin. Really? Our neighboring st- yep, our neighboring states have them: Minnesota, Michigan. Um, well, Indiana is not technically our neighbor, yeah. pretty close to us. They have a national park. And um, I just think the Apostle Islands, I think it's a very high bar to achieve the designation of a national park. I don't think this should just be done willy nilly, but I think the Apostle Islands are worthy of this designation because it is truly a special place here in the United States of America. So what is the process for that then? From beginning to end, how does does it have to go through this this committee? Then it has to it does it go to the house? Does it go to the senate? Does it have to? What's the process in order to get this done? It sounds like July twenty fourth kind of starts the process, right? Yeah, it's a regular bill, and uh, actually the process has already started because we've spent months drafting this. First of all, we reached out to make sure that the local people um, that there was some interest there, and right. also that we wanted to get their input. So we went to local people, including the tribes first, um, like the Bad River and um, the Red Cliff tribes, spoke to them about this, let them know that we were considering this. And uh, so we did some of that outreach initially. Then we contacted the National Park Service, um, asked them to put together a map because a map is the most important part of this because that delineates the boundaries of the park. And anytime that there's any question that happens, the map is controlling. So it's always really important with something like this that has to do with national uh, uh, 
federal lands designations to make sure you have the map in. So anyhow, uh, we did all that stuff with the National Park Service over the last number of months, and uh, we were able to complete the process here and be able to introduce the bill. And it's like any other bill, um, we'll go through, uh, go before the federal uh, lands subcommittee that I chair, and then hopefully we'll get a full vote if I mean, we're, we want to hear what people have to say, but hopefully we can move it then to the full committee of the Natural Resources Committee, pass it out of there and send it to the floor of the House. Is there a cost to this? I mean, if you have that designation, is it uh, oh, yeah, like more resources? Well, now that you are an official national park, uh, you know, you need four people that work there. So I, I don't know. Is there any cost to this at all? Or is it literally just the designation? Yeah, there'll be some uh, some costs, but you know, I don't think it'll be anything significant. I mean, there's going to yeah, need to be a same change of signage. Um, uh, I'm sure something will be done in regards to a visitor center. You know, some of those things um, will be done. But I think also that having the national park designation, I think, will give the apostles greater opportunity when negotiating with the National Park Service, because I mean, they're all, they're all negotiating to get money, right? Mm -hmm. For that comes from, you got one big pot of money that goes to the National Park Service and they have to divvy that money out to the various national parks. I think being a national park versus a national seashore should move them up the pecking order a little bit in terms of being able to get additional money for the Apostle Islands. Yeah. July 24th, that is. Why can't we follow that one? Yeah, it's going to be really interesting. I, yeah. I've not done anything like this before, so really interested in uh, certainly seeking people's input, and uh, we sure welcome people um, sharing their thoughts in regards sure. to this. And, and just, I know we're talking about this quite a bit, but I'm, I'm just fascinated by all this. Uh, is this something that is typically a, 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 um, a partisan, I mean, I can't imagine how it would be, but sometimes I'm really surprised on how some things are when I didn't think they would be. But this is not a Republican Democrat thing, right? This kind of a topic about a federal land and designated, in this case, the Apostle Islands. You know, I think we'll find out some of that on July 24th oh, sure. uh, when we have the hearing. Uh, I think it's generally nonpartisan, yeah. and I expect that to be the case. I mean, the only thing that might be possible is do people in Bayfield County say, uh, we don't want the additional high profile of being a national park. We like it being nice and quiet here the way it is. And we don't want any more attention. Maybe a few people respond in that manner, but I think generally uh, it, the people we've talked, spoken with so far, it's generally been positive, but um, that's the purpose of a hearing. We want to hear from people, you know, whether they, um, oppose, support, or just have questions. That's the purpose of a hearing. All right. Those are the only things that I know I wanted to make sure I talked to you. And um, thank you so much for bringing up that Apostle Islands. I didn't know. when is it, Did you announce this summer? Because I haven't seen this anywhere. Yeah, we really kept it under wraps. You were just waiting for the show. I know. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to wait until we talk to Ben. Mm -hmm. There you go. Um, what there else you. do you want to talk I'm about? I'm telling you, people. <laughs> you got to get on the driving show regardless of your politics. Oh, that's funny. Uh, what else do you want to talk about that we didn't get a chance to talk about yet? Is there anything so, else you know, should say? You know, I think the uh, next big thing that uh, people are going to be hearing a lot about will be next week. The Republican National Convention is going yeah. to be in Milwaukee. I'm going to be down there. Never attended a uh, national convention before. And so I'm really anxious to go there, especially with it being our, our home state of Wisconsin. Uh -huh. um, I think people are going to be really impressed. Milwaukee is ready for this going to be lots of good events and um yeah just really looking forward to uh to people coming from all over the united states of america and i would say uh from around the world that are going to be there in milwaukee and mm -hmm. uh, people are going to see um uh, great things in regards to our wonderful state of wisconsin are you going to be do you run do you go home to wisconsin well of course you would do you go from dc just to down to milwaukee what are your plans over the next few days is my question for today, no, and tomorrow, um, and then the weekend. How does that work for you? We'll be casting our final votes here within the next hour or two for this week. I'm bugging out of here immediately and headed home 
uh, be home for a couple days, and then I'm going to head for nice. Milwaukee Sunday afternoon. Awesome. Uh, Congressman, as always, it's a pleasure. We'll see you next month. Can't wait to get the update about the uh, 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 your uh, meeting on the 24th. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Always good to join you. I uh, hope everyone is uh, enjoying summer in Wisconsin. And um, have a great schooner rodeo Brody. and parade. That's right. Special thank you to Wisconsin 7th Congressional District Representative Tom Tiffany for joining us for a chat today. I'll see all of you back here tomorrow morning when I'll be joined by Wisconsin 74th Assembly District Representative Chance Green. So until then, for Dryware.com, I'm Ben Dryden saying thank you for watching and have a blessed day.